the Fenway Sports Group, where to start of this train wreck of an organization. For some background for all of you who don't know the Fenway Sports Group, it is a ownership group that owns the Boston Red Sox, the Liverpool FC, and the Pittsburgh Penguins. As of right now, all three of these teams are experiencing some of the worst seasons in franchise history. No part in thanks to these guys at Fenway Sports Group. So let's get into it here and let's look at some of these teams and how bad they have done thanks to FSG. Now let's start off here with Liverpool FC, one of the most storied franchises in all of Premier Soccer's history. Since putting the team in 2010 from a bankruptcy sale, thanks to the previous owners having horrible financials and having to sell the team, this team has pretty much underachieved except for in 2020, when they won a Premier League championship. But it only took a worldwide pandemic for it to happen. Kind of like the Dodgers. <coughs> And now this year, the team is having massive financial issues as well, and they have to find more investors or else the team will go bankrupt. Kind of like in 2010 when they bought the team in the first place. Huh. Since 2010, they have gone through four different managers. And for all those who don't know soccer, managers is the same thing as a head coach, so they've gone through four of them in 10 years. And to make things worse for these coaches, in 2020 they wouldn't pay them until they actually played games when COVID delayed the season. What a great view for FSG. And if you're wondering by the way, yes, since due to their horrible financials, they have had trouble winning. And this year they have been completely atrocious and their fans are now calling for FSG to uh basically sell the team because they just cannot stand it anymore. As someone who roots for a team owned by FSG, I feel for you guys and I wish the same thing for you just like I wish for my team. Now let's talk about the Pittsburgh Penguins, who have been one of the most elite teams in all of hockey for the last 17 years. In this last year and a half since FSG has bought the team, they have ran it straight into the ground. This team this year broke their 17-year playoff streak in the most painstaking fashion, in large part thanks to Penguins general manager, the mad genius himself, Ron Hextall. Oh lord, where to begin with this guy? After FSG bought the team, they asked Hextall what his plans were for the team. The man could not write down and express what his plans were for the team. I'm not sure exactly what constitutes a plan, but if you can't write it down or express it in some way, is it even a plan? So they are pretty much here until they finally fired the guy right after they missed the playoffs have let this man run hard wild and literally screw this team up in the most horrible ways possible. So let's get into what good old Ron Hextall has done for the Penguins. His first trade was trading for Jeff Carter. At the time, it was a good trade, actually for the most part. It was a one-year rental, can help him out in the playoffs, hopefully get some scoring. They then signed him to a two-year extension who is getting paid $3.5 million a year and has a no-movement clause. The man at the time of signing was 36. By the end of the contract, he will be 38. And boy did the pains of that show this year, pretty much being forced to play third-line center at his age, because the Penguins in their bottom six death does not exist in the slightest. I wonder why. Maybe because during the expansion draft, Ron Hextall decided to protect Jeff Carter instead of Jared McCann. This year for the Kraken, Jared McCann had 40 goals. Do you want to know how many goals uh, Jeff Carter had? I'll give you a hint. It wasn't anywhere close to 40. And this isn't even the worst of stuff. 
They also let Brandon Tanev go in the expansion draft. Brandon, Brandon Tanev was like the best option they had on the bottom six for the two years they had him. He was actually a very good player. Who they replaced him with? Brock McGinn. Oh, Lord. The man did not score a goal in 23 games during this year. It took him 23 games to get one goal. I am not making this up. This legitimately happened. And this is not even the worst of the, some of the stuff. Now let's also talk about some of the other guys brought in. Jeff Petrie from Montreal. All it cost was Mike Matheson, which honestly wasn't a bad deal because Matheson wasn't the best. However, it turned the defensive core into an insanely old group that could basically not do much at all. And also at the bottom six here, they acquired Ryan Poling. Poling at when healthy, which was like barely ever this year, was actually decent for the most part. Teddy Bluegel still kept his fourth, fourth line center, became one of the most hopeful players the Pens had for the bottom six, to being a little one nightmare and having to be traded for scraps. Kind of like how Bark McGinn was as well. And then there's Kasperi Kapanen. He decided to sign him to a nice little extension here in the offseason, after being restricted free agent and having a down year. Kasperi Kapanen got even worse this year and had to be literally waived. They couldn't even trade him. They had to waive him. He was that bad. The bottom six honestly may be worse than the, than Montreal, the Montreal Canadiens' top six. And they are actually one of the worst teams out there at this point. This is a little disaster. And then also he has even traded young talent such as John Marino for Ty Smith. Ty Smith, who was 24 and actually has a very good player if actually being caught up, was only caught up for three games. Because they screwed, because Ron Textall screwed the cap up so much so they couldn't call him up because they didn't have the cap space. So basically, they wasted a whole year of Ty Smith having to play in the AHL. Jeez. And then let's not even get started on some yellow ones here. Philip Hollander, acquired for Jaron McCann from the Maple Leafs, is so mad at this organization, he has left to go back home to play in his home country. He has literally left the NHL to play in his home country. This is, honest to God, one of the worst things I've seen the Penguins do in forever. This man has literally was brought in to make the team younger and build up the farm system. He has done the complete opposite. He has made the team significantly older, where the average age on the team was 32.1 years old, and has literally pretty much, other than keeping some prospects, has either alienated them out, like Hollandor, and now this team is pretty much a disaster. And thankfully, they did file him after this disaster of a season where they got eliminated from playoff contention by the Blackhawks. The Blackhawks were tanking for Bedard and did not even want to win the game. And now, and also in this last one and a half year, they have alienated Mario Lemieux, one of the main reasons they went back to back in 2016 and 2017. And main, one of the main reasons why the Penguins are even the Pittsburgh Penguins right now. And now after firing one Hextall, thankfully, they are now considering hiring Stan Bowman. If you don't know who Stan Bowman is, he is the former GM of the Chicago Blackhawks. And yes, he is the GM who was around doing all the bad things that happened in 20, not 2009 to those prospects. Great job, FSG. Real great job. Good job breaking up a 17 playoff year playoff streak. You guys are truly masterminds of managing teams. And now we finally come to the crown jewel of the Fenway Sports Group, the Boston Red Sox. In pretty much five years, they have torn the Boston Red Sox from World Series champions to league laughing stocks. It all started when they traded away Mookie Betts to the Dodgers for what was considered one of the worst hauls I've ever seen for a reigning AL MVP. 
they also let go multiple high-end prospects and core pieces of the team. This year, they let Mookie Betts walk in free agency, and he actually went to a real team in the Padres. Andrew Benintendi, when he was a little disappointing, was traded for literal scraps. He was their top prospect and a core part of the 2018 World Series team. And this just goes on to the amount of players they have pretty much traded for nothing. Right now, they are basically hoping to God that a Marcelo Mayor can come up at some point and hopefully save this team. And let's not even get started on the 2018 World Series against the Dodgers. You know how they won in 2018? Do you want to know how they won? Because they cheated. Just like the Astros. Literally the exact same thing with the trash cans and everything. And you know what they did to the mastermind behind it? Their manager, Alex Cora, after he was already suspended for one year, they kept the guy. They, honest to God, kept him around. When even the Astros fired their manager for it. Like, this is honestly one of the most laughable things of all time. They have pretty much made horrible trades, and have nearly ticked off every single player. They are lucky to God that Raphael Devers finally overlooked all the transgressions and signed that contract. Because, let's be real here, if they would have had to trade him, things would have gone even more worse than they already have. Which is pretty bad considering they went from like one of the best teams to one of the worst teams in pretty much a short span. And also looking at this team too, just everything about it has been pretty much just one thing after another of screwing up. And pretty much this is team has just been totally mismanaged. The Z GM they have right now has really blown up this team. He honestly may be on par with Juan Hextall as really bad GM. Like he honest to God is a good comparator with him to take the mantle of Fenway Sports Group's worst general manager. And he makes a pretty good point by trading Mookie Betts. And letting Z Bogarts literally walk in free agency and not even offering him. And you want to know what his big moves have been? Acquiring David Price, who cannot stay healthy and has, I think, retired. That or he's just oh, hot. You can never really tell the guy because he's hot literally every single game. So you can't tell if he's retired or not. Or oh, we could talk about Trevor Story and the massive contract they gave, gave Trevor Story. He has not even played that many games for them due to him getting hurt. He is still hurt at this moment and has not even played any games this year. This is literally a joke of a franchise. And you want to know what happened to the old GM after they let him go? You know what he did? He went to Toronto and built up a nice young youth movement of Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette, and Nate, and Nate Pearson, and they are now looking like a potential World Series contenders. And then, he went to Pittsburgh. And even though they have been off for the last two years, they are now getting pretty much everything together and looking like an actual threat. And their youth are starting to come up. And their youth are very, very good. You know, it would be kind of nice if you uh, maybe kept Ben Sherrington instead of firing him. Just saying, I don't think Ben Sherrington would have done what uh, their GM has done pretty much to this point. You guys are now one of the worst teams in baseball and are nothing but a... This is a hodgepodge of nothingness. In the last year, year, year Fenway Sports Group has basically been a hodgepodge of nothing. Liverpool FC, a hard part of nothingness. The Pittsburgh Penguins, a newly mismanaged and disastrous franchise ever since being bought by the Fenway Sports Group, they are a hard part of nothingness. The Boston Red Sox, pretty much are the literal example of a hard part of nothingness. Dennis Orkley, I think you need to realize something. When you call a team a hard part of nothingness like the Pirates, it normally bites you back. It bit back not only the Red Sox, but the other two teams as well. 
And honestly, it's the perfect acronym to describe the Fenway Sports Group. Nothing but a...